Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Physics of Funder. Today I am here with a brand new topic of advanced physics which is called Astronomy and Astrophysics. This is the first lecture on that series. In this video, we mainly focus on astronomical scales. So without wasting any time, let's get into the video. First, we have to know what is astronomy and astrophysics. And what is the difference between them? Astronomy deals with the dynamics of the stellar objects, whereas astrophysics deals with the interior of that. To study the dynamics of stellar objects, mainly observation is sufficient. But to study the interior of that, we need to analyze that. Hence, we can say astronomy depends on observation, but astrophysics depends on analysis. Another branch we have regarding this, which is cosmology. Cosmology deals with the structure and formation of universe. In today's topic, we deal with the basic property of astrophysics. That means to analyze the stellar universe, we have to we have some tools to the measure them, which is astronomical scales. First, we have to measure the distance between the stellar objects. This is a huge task. Some of uh, some units we have, one by one, we recognize them. First is astronomical unit. Astronomical unit is the mean distance between the sun and the earth. Numerically, it is one astronomical unit is equal to 1.496 into 10 to the power 11 meter. We have another unit to measure distance between stellar objects, which is called light year. One light year is the distance traveled by light in one year. Numerically, one light year is equal to 9.460 into 10 to the power 15 meter. In terms of astronomical unit, we can Say one light year is equal to 6.323 into 10 to the power 4 astronomical unit. We have another bigger unit regarding this context, which is called parsec. One parsec is defined as the distance at which the radius of Earth's orbit subtends an angle of one second. To analyze this, we consider this picture. Here, radius of the Earth's orbit subtend an angle of one arc second for this distance. This distance is called parsec. Numerically, one parsec is equal to 3.262 light year. In terms of astronomical unit, one parsec is equal to 2.062 into 10 to the power 5 astronomical unit. Or, one parsec can be said as 3.085 into 10 to the power 16 meter. To study the dimension and mass of astronomical objects, we have some measures. The sizes of star or stellar dimension are usually measured in units of solar radius, which is equals to 7 into 10 to the power 8 meter. For example, Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, has radius 2 r theta. Again, Stellar masses are usually measured in units of solar mass, which is equals to m theta is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 30 kg. Example, the mass of our galaxy is about 10 to the power 11 m theta. In this context, S. Chandrasekhar, that means Subramaniam Chandrasekhar, showed that the mass of a white dwarf star cannot exceed 1.4 m theta. This is called Chandrasekhar limit. A star might look bright because it is closer to us and a really brighter star might appear faint because it is too far. We can estimate the apparent brightness of astronomical objects easily, but if we want to measure their real or intrinsic brightness, we must take their distance into account. The apparent brightness of a star is defined in terms of what is called the apparent magnitude of a star. Apparent magnitude of an astronomical object is a measure of how bright it appears. 
in the second century BC, the Greek astronomer Hipparchus was the first astronomer to catalog stars visible to the naked eye. He divided stars into six classes or apparent magnitudes by their relative brightness as seen from Earth. The brightest stars are assigned first magnitude star denoted as m is equal to 1. And the faintest star visible to the naked eye are assigned to the sixth magnitude star denoted as m is equal to 6. Hence we can say that according to magnitude scale a smaller magnitude means a brighter star. W. Herschel shows that brightness of first magnitude star is 100 times than that of sixth magnitude star, the sixth magnitude star. If brightness of first magnitude star is B1 and that of sixth magnitude star is B6, then we can say that B1 by B6 is equal to 100. In 1856, Poxon shows that ratio of brightness of two consecutive magnitude stars is same. That is, B1 by B2 is equal to B2 by B3 is equal to B3 by B4 is equal to B4 by B5 is equal to B5 by B6. This is known as Poxon's law. From Poxon's law, we have to find out relationship between brightness and apparent magnitude of a star. According to Poxon's law, ratio of brightness of two consecutive magnitude stars is same. In this context, we can consider B1 by B2 is equal to B2 by B3 is equal to B3 by B4 is equal to B4 by B5 is equal to B5 by B6. All are equals to some quantity x, say. Now, if we write B1 by B6, then it can be written as B1 by B2 times B2 by B3 times B3 by B4 times B4 by B5 times B5 by B6. Now according to Herschel, brightness of first magnitude star is 100 times than that of sixth magnitude star, which means the left hand side of this equation B1 by B6 can be written as 100 according to Herschel's law. And all the multiplied terms individually equals to x. So the right hand side can be written as x to the power 5. From this, we can calculate x as fifth root of 100 which is equals to 2.52512. Therefore, you can say that B1 by B2 is equal to 2.512 which further equals to 2.512 whole to the power 2 minus 1, which is which is resembles denominator, uh, denominator suffix minus numerator suffix. B1 by B3 is equal to 2.512 whole square, which can be written as 2.512 whole to the power 3 minus 1, which is again denominator suffix minus numerator suffix. Similarly, B1 by B4 is equal to 2.512 whole cube, which can be written as 2.512 whole to the power 4 minus 1 and so on. In general, if two stars having brightness Bm and Bn, here we consider m is greater than n, then it is seen that Bn by Bm is equal to 2.512 whole to the power denominator suffix minus numerator suffix means whole to the power m minus m. If we take log on both sides, we can say that log of Bn by Bm is equal to log of the right hand side. Power can be written as a multiplied multiplier. That means m minus n times log of 2.512 which is equals to 0 0.4. From this we can write m minus n is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.4 log of bn by bm which is further equals to 2.5 log of bn by bm. This is the relation between brightness and apparent magnitude of a star. 
if we take antilock to this equation again we can write this equation because here we consider log of base 10 hence this is the 10 to the power 0.4 times m minus n. From these equations we can calculate relative magnitudes of a star which, which will be shown in future problems. Nowadays another classification is done which is zero magnitude, magnitude star. This is considered as standard because their brightness remains constant. They are seen from north pole near to the pole star. Even negative magnitudes have been assigned to extend the scale. A star of minus one magnitude is 2.512 times brighter than the star of zero magnitude. So we can say that the larger the magnitude on negative scale indicates higher brightness while the larger positive magnitudes indicate the faintness of an object. Now we have a problem to solve. The apparent magnitude of the sun is minus 26.81 and that of the alpha centauri is minus 0.10 which one of them is brighter and by how much. Clearly, sun have larger magnitude on negative scale. So, sun, sun is brighter than alpha centauri, but how much brighter? For this, we have to calculate m sun minus m alpha centauri. Means, the difference between apparent magnitudes of sun and alpha centauri, which is calculated as minus 26.71. Now we have the formula B alpha centauri divided by B sun is equal to 10 to the power 0.4 times that difference. Here we have to uh, we have we have to cos us about that. In this here we have to write the difference between apparent magnitudes of the given two star more specifically the magnitude of the numerator star should be subtracted from the magnitude of the denominator star and the result should be written here like this. Further calculation shows that B sun divided by B alpha centauri is equal to 10 to the power 10.7. That means the sun is about 10 to the power 10.7 times brighter than alpha centauri. Another same type of problem shows in your screen. You have to solve this in uh, at home and if you are able to write the answer in the comment section, please write the answer in the comment section. Hope you will enjoy the video. If you enjoy my video and want to so want to see my future video so please subscribe my channel for future video notification also you can join my channel to support me thanks for watching this video